Hey up, it's Ed at Recruit Me. Today I'm joined by Sarah. It's not the news, it's a video interview which we've done before for Great Grantham News. Um, so what we're going to do is talk about a few things local, a few things to do with Sarah's uh, Armed Forces Charity. Um, so we'll start with, so who are you and what do you do? Right, my name's Sarah Harris and I work for Sapphire the Armed Forces Charity in, in the East Midlands uh, covering Lincolnshire as the Regional Fundraising Officer. Um, with a responsibility to raise awareness and funds to support the operation of our East Midlands single point of contact. Fantastic. So, as obviously Lincoln Sher and the East Midlands fundraising mm -hmm. officer at SAFA, what's your key responsibility, Sarah? Right, my key responsibilities break down into, into two areas really. Firstly, is awareness raising of SAFA's mission and its work and the support that we provide to members of the Armed Forces family, which is why today is a fabulous opportunity for us mm -hmm. as part of the awareness raising. And we do that in a variety of ways. It's talking with companies, it's attending community events, it's working with organisations like health and social services um, through their social prescribing services uh, to get SAFA's name out there and enable people to find out about what we might be able to do to assist. The other side of it, which hopefully leads on from that awareness raising is actually raising funds to support the operation of the single point of contact in the East Midlands um, and, that, and that's obviously a very key part to keep us going. Yeah absolutely so I suppose the next question that will lead in is obviously being clear about SAFA I think it'd be good to talk about SAFA's mission um, but also the specific services that it can offer our armed forces community in the county. Okay, so SAFA's mission is an aspiration is to be the trusted source of support for members of the armed forces family. Um, we within the East Midlands, we've got our single point of contact. So if someone from, for example, uh, from Grantham or Boston or anywhere in actually Greater Lincolnshire, mm. um, is in need of assistance, they can call our single point of contact, um, talk through what their concerns are and we will either signpost them if for example um, we're not the best expert to support them with their particular need yeah. or if they are mainly in financial difficulties that's something that we can assist with and we would meet with them, understand their circumstances and then make an application to military benevolent funds yeah. to support their identified need. We do so much more as, a, as an organisation nationally. Um, we, do, we provide a mentoring service, which is for anybody who's transitioning out of the armed forces. And we've got volunteer mentors in, in the county who work with people coming out of the services. Um, we provide an adoption service for exclusively military, serving military families. Um, one of the things with the local authorities, if you are wanting to adopt, is that you work within, for example, Lincolnshire, you apply to Lincolnshire, but if you're then posted to Dorset, yeah. for example, you can't take your adoption process with you through the local authority. So what SAFA does is we go with you. So you always work with SAFA um, and you never have to start again if you're a serving member of the armed forces wanting to adopt. We do all sorts of other things. We deliver the RAF social work service, which we've done for 30 years. So we have representation on all the RAF, RAF bases, including the many that we've got in Lincolnshire, Waddington, Digby, Cranwell, etc. Yeah. Um, we we were involved in the inception of the Military Wives Choir, that I'm sure you'll be familiar with. Yeah. And um, TV exposure, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> and we've got choirs in Lincolnshire at Waddington mm -hmm. uh, and Cranwell as well, I think. Um, we work with veterans in the criminal justice system, so if, you've got, if you're a veteran in prison, for example in Lincoln Prison, there are volunteers out there who are trained specifically to support you in prison and support you um, when you leave prison. Yeah. Wide range of services that are available, not just the through the single point of contact, so a lot, a lot going on. Yeah, it sounds it, and it, it, it's nice to have an organisation that's there for the armed forces community it's a very unique job role um, and it has been over many many years 
Um, I'm reliably informed uh, by my colleague Devon, who's behind the camera today, um, that Sadler's history dates back to 1885. It does indeed. Um, this one's probably going to be a tricky answer, but obviously we're not in 1885 anymore. How has there been, has there been an evolution of what Sadler offers and how it's accessed uh, by individuals in the armed forces community? Absolutely, there has. When Saffa was established in February 1885, um, it was established by James Gill Day, who was a serving officer, who was aware that there were families back home of his men who needed support. So he started the organisation supporting Army and Navy personnel in 1885. So we're very close to our 140th birthday, mm. which is going to be quite a celebration. Um, in 1919, that's when... Um, Air Force personnel became eligible for SAFA support yeah. when we became tri-service um, and we got our first uh, Royal Charter of Incorporation in 1926. We have been very fortunate. Princess Alexandra was involved right at the beginning of SAFA's life, if you like, yeah. um, became our first patron and subsequently became the Queen and we've always had a Royal Patron ever since until the sad and untimely death of, of the Queen last year and we're now in this limbo period waiting to see whether King Charles will will support Safa going forward. Mm -hmm. um, the Queen became our patron in 1952 when she, when she ascended to the throne so she'd been a patron for more than 70 years. Wow. So we're really optimistic but realistic about about the chances of mm -hmm. the King becoming becoming our, our patron. Um, we we work with over two and a half thousand volunteers who are key to the delivery of our services and that has always been the case. We've always worked with volunteers that, and they've always been the people that deliver the services to our beneficiaries, um, which is quite an important part of Sethra's philosophy, if you like. Um, obviously, we do have paid staff who, who fulfil many roles, in particular supporting the, the volunteers who are branch networks. In terms of evolution, in the very beginning, Princess Alexandra was fundamental in the establishing of the well, Queen Alexandra, Queen Alexandra Royal Nursing Corps, yeah. which you'll be familiar with, and all the nursing staff. And gradually, the service has expanded to include all the things I've, I've mentioned um, already. Um, the RAF is a paid contract, so that's an MOD contract, so um, that's one of the things that we have paid staff throughout the whole service, yeah. um, but they interestingly volunteer to support some of the committees that SAFA has on the, the basis where we've got serving RAF personnel. So they kind of are paid by SAFA, but they also volunteer as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. We've got a lot going on at the moment mm -hmm. um, because we are mindful that we need to be fit for purpose going forward. We've, we've had a process of... Um, change going on which is what created the regional hubs because through our volunteer surveys we found that volunteers were doing an awful lot of work they were working all, some of them almost full time which is not the way we want volunteers mm -hmm. to be working and feeling obligated and and stressed to be frank with with their work which should be pleasurable there should be pleasure for them in, in doing their volunteering so we, through a process of consultation with volunteers and staff, created eight regions, um, East Midlands is one, and, and created a virtual hub where we would, I, I came to Safra and worked in the hub initially actually, so we used to take the calls, we were the first point of contact, and relieve the pressure on the branches so that they had more time to support people that were in need and they didn't have the worry of the, the basic admin. Um, yeah. So... And, that, and that's another revolution. We're going through further change at the moment to make sure that we are fit going forward in terms of specifically our casework delivery to beneficiaries. Um, and, and East Midlands, Lincolnshire being a fundamental part of that is, is going to be one of the trial areas for the new model of delivering that support. So quite exciting times actually. Yeah. Sounds it, definitely. Yeah. And it's, lots it's going a, on. Lots going on. Um, and it's clearly evolved to help people um, over the, well, not just recent years, but mm. in its whole entire existence, yeah. which is fantastic. And as you say, 
it's not it's coming up to 140 years old yeah. and it's still used and it's still relevant and still needed absolutely today. needed more and more i think in the current climate as well yeah, yeah. cool um so this is probably again another tricky question sarah but as an armed forces community anywhere in the world the the they can always have unique challenges that mm -hmm. people don't have in Civvy Street. Is there any common issues you found in your patch that SAF has had to help with? When you say common issues, do you mean... It, uh, whether the people are callers, uh, callers the charity's mm -hmm. main core clientele. Yeah. Ha, ha, is there a common issue? Is there a thread? Yeah. Or, or does it sort of like... At the moment, obviously, cost of living is a thing. Mm -hmm. Does that flow through into uh, the people that you're looking at? Okay. Well, one of the common things that we find with veterans, and as you'll appreciate, we do have a large military family mm -hmm. in, the, in, in Lincolnshire, is that people struggling with homelessness. Um, we, we do have callers into the hub who need support sort of from two different angles, really. They need financial support because if they're offered accommodation through the local authorities, whether that be their own accommodation or a private landlord, they need deposit and first month's rent. And that's quite challenging for a lot of people. Um, particularly young people coming out of the services, um, local authorities are sometimes reluctant, despite the um, Armed Forces Covenant, to support people appropriately into their own homes because obviously they've been moving around and it's not about prioritising but it's about not disadvantaging people because they've served, they may have a family connection with the county. Um, so we support them with that as, as with the mentors, in fact we work quite closely with mentors. So just thinking about one gentleman in Lincolnshire, he had support from one of our mentoring colleagues who supported him with his application to housing to the local authority while the hub was supporting him and making an application to enable him to pay his deposit and his first month's mm -hmm. rent. And, and this chap had nothing having come out of the army. And so what we also did was make sure that he had everything he needed. He had a bed, he had a sofa, he, he had curtains, pots and pans. So we supported him with that through the military mm -hmm. benevolent funds that we applied to. Um, we, we start with the um, regimental funds who then pass on to the ABF. Yeah. And then RBL will, will often assist as well to help us meet the shortfalls. Um, so we moved him. He, when he got his property, he was supported into his new home. Um, a very nice young man. I happened to be a caseworker at the time with that gentleman. Really nice guy. Really why it resonates with you. Though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, I've been very fortunate. Having started working in the East Midlands Hub, I was there for, only there for a year, but it gave me a really valuable insight into the issues that people are facing, particularly now I've come into the regional fundraising role because I understand how the hub works and I've been involved directly with casework to give me an opportunity to understand how our volunteers go through the process. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with some absolutely wonderful, wonderful people who have no expectation, they don't appreciate all ways that SAFA can be there for them and provide support. Um, Another example was a gentleman that rang up and I took his call and he was after a verification of service because he needed that for his housing application and that's all he asked for, he was asking for. And we got talking over the phone. Um, he's a quite chatty guy and I'm quite chatty. Um, and it transpired that he had no mobility scooter. He's got a, he's mid-40s, he's got a degenerative um, neurological illness. Um, his mobility is zero basically um he lives in private rented accommodation his landlord wouldn't support aids and adaptations being fitted so he was really struggling um transpired that if he had a mobility scooter he would actually be able to get out of the house independently so we did our usual assessments and casework and, and did our reports submitted that and actually he's now got a mobility scooter which has opened up a whole new world to him. It sounds so simple as well. It is, and, and he only asked for his help with getting his verification of service, but through conversation, mm. you know, people become more relaxed, they're a bit more open, 
and, that, and that's the key thing for the hub is being approachable and talking with people and, and getting to the bottom Listen. of Listen. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, that two superb examples, Sarah, just yeah. tip of the iceberg of the work that you guys Absolutely. are doing day in, day out. Um, which does lead very succinctly onto our next question. Now, whether you're a food bank, which obviously have got a lot of press mm. coverage at the moment, or a medical charity, fundraising for any charity is essential. Mm. So how can businesses and individuals in the East Midlands and, of course, Lincolnshire support SAFA? Oh, there are so many ways, Ed. There are so many ways, and that can be... For example, if you're an organisation, it can be volunteering. You know, people may have financial skills, could possibly support a branch as a treasurer. People might become volunteer caseworkers um, or mentors or sort of um, community engagement type volunteers um, help us raise awareness locally. Um, it can be as simple as, for example, recruit me having contact details and, and leaflets available for people when they come in. Um, it could be taking part in a, or running a big brew-up. I don't know if you're familiar with our big brew-up. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of national campaign. It's about coming in for a cake and a cuppa and, and raising a little bit of money you know, as, as, um, as part of that process. Two things that are so phenomenal, you, you know, they're, they're not achievable for the likes of well, me certainly, but I don't know if you're familiar with Chris Lewis, who walked around the UK coast. Wow, okay. He started in August 2017. Yeah. Um, he went north to start with, and he got caught in Scotland during lockdown. So he was um, on Hillsay, um, an island on his own, with his dog that he'd adopted on the, on the way during one of the first lockdowns. Um, subsequently carried on when he could, and then met another wild camper called Kate um, in Scotland, who was off on her own adventure. Um, ended up becoming a couple, yeah. kept walking, had a baby, kept walking, and finally got back to his starting point in Wales at the beginning of August. And he raised over half a million pounds for Saffa doing that. that. Well, phenomenal achievement. Yeah. And there's probably a TV show there as well, yeah. isn't there? He's been on Ben... Fogel. Yeah. Ben Fogel's done a programme on him. He's written a book. He's writing another book. Uh, he's back in Scotland now, having finished the walk, just taking some time out and planning their next adventure. Yeah. Um, phenomenal story. Um, he's been, you know, there have been articles on him in all the papers and things like that. Or it can be something as simple. We've got a colleague at Waddington, serving guy. It was really funny, actually. He, he, he created a Just Giving page. And I get a notification because he's in the East Midlands. Yeah. Um, and um, so I popped him an email and said, you know, hello, thank you. Doing a rowing challenge. So I said to him, oh, you know, as you're at Waddington, you know, perhaps I can come and meet you. I can take some photographs and support your event. Turned out he was actually in the Falklands Islands on deployment at the time. Um, so he did his challenge in the Falklands. But when he came back, it was really nice to go and meet him. Yeah. And he did it with some friends. So, you know, and it could be... It could be anything. It really doesn't matter. Um, people can just get involved in any way which is appropriate for them. You know, and it's not about raising thousands of pounds. It's about support, awareness and every little, every little helps. In, in, in all honesty, every yeah. every little helps. Um, yeah, we've got, we, we have a, a variety of events as well. In fact, one's really close to you, um, Belton. We do a Proms night um, oh, okay. in Belton, um, and we, we use volunteers to do that. We work in partnership with them. Um, it's called the Battle Proms, um, and the organisation that organises it, SAF is their partner. So we provide all the volunteers um, and fundraise at the event, and that's at Belton House. So that's that's a fantastic event. And, and venue as well, yeah. Oh, yes, venue. yes. Um, yeah, there are so many ways, as I say. Um, so if anybody is interested in volunteering, I, I'd be more than happy to. One of the things, topic-wise, that you've discussed mm -hmm. um, is obviously the awareness and services that you provide your armed forces community about mental health issues. Um, 
see, there are challenges out there for all individuals, whether it's young, old, mm -hmm. doesn't matter, uh, on background, on social, economic status, on employed or unemployed. So how does SAFA address the challenges that it's facing with mental health um, within the armed forces community at the moment? And obviously, I suppose, touch upon how people access that support that you provide as well. Okay. So, SAFA are very good at supporting their staff to ensure that we are equipped to understand and support people when they phone us. So, the staff in the hubs uh, and also the volunteers get support with mental health training. Um, so, we do basic mental health first aid, mental health first aid type training. We also have access to, um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but at, uh, training to enable us to identify and support someone who may be suicidal. Yeah. Um, and however, SAFA is not the expert in mental health. So what we would generally do with the awareness that we've got is signpost people either back to their GPs or to Op Courage. And of course, Lincolnshire is key to coordinating of op courage in these midlands we're the lead authority mm -hmm. um we would we would signpost basically to to experts um and the samaritans if it's desperate um because they will understand and know how to deal with someone in an expert way what we also have to support us in dealing with any mental health challenges that we come across we've got a mental health and wellbeing manager called Stuart Irons, who's available to us as employees and to all our volunteers for advice. You know, if they're not quite sure where to point someone, then they would do that. But the people in the hub will be the key points of contact and will listen and make a judgment. And obviously, if we are very concerned, then we would involve safeguarding. If there's a vulnerable adult situation that we would, you know, we would go to the safeguarding route. Quite a joined up approach then. I would hope so, yes. yes. I mean, we, the hubs, all the hubs, um, the one in the East Midlands only opened in September 21, um, but I've got so much information. I mean, they're a real valuable resource now. I mean, I remember back in the day when I was there, the spreadsheet was massive and growing and growing. So we've got all the contact details. We can make direct referrals for people if they would like us to do. So we can refer to our courage. We can refer to other mental health services on behalf of clients. We can refer to social prescribing as well, you know, who, who are out there in the community and, and we're working closely with them in Lincolnshire particularly um, and doing some veterans, not, not exclusively veteran, but some of the drop-ins are very generic, but we're focusing and saying the drop-in at in Gainsborough on this date will, SAFA will be there and supporting. So we, there's all sorts of different ways that we can do it, however, we do that because we are not the experts. There are people out there who've got the appropriate professional medical knowledge. Brilliant answer, Sarah. Fantastic. Uh, we move on to goals and aspirations for SAFA, um, obviously specific to your patch of East Midlands, which includes mm -hmm. Lincolnshire. Um, obviously you mentioned coming up to 140th birthday for the organisation. So evolution and Changes, what are the goals and aspirations for SAFA? Basically, to become the point of uh, the organisation of choice for people in the military community, armed forces, family, when they're in need of assistance, to be to be trusted to be that, that source of assistance. I mean, we hope we are, but we need more people to know about SAFA because everybody is familiar with a lot of the other large. Um, military benevolent military charities um, however SAFA is quite small relatively speaking um, in terms of profile so we've got to get ourselves out there and that, that's part of that so people know who we are um, we want to make sure that we deliver consistent quality services um, we want to be able to better measure and demonstrate that we, we, we do it, but we need to be able to demonstrate it effectively. Um, we want to be kind of perhaps doing things that are slightly less traditional. Um, I've mentioned already working with social prescribing, working with the integrated care boards, um, 
local health authorities, the partnership trusts, um, to enhance the visibility of the organisation, to collaborate with the authorities, to um, enable them to better support their veteran communities, people that are using their services, whether that be by a presence in the hospital, in a particular department at a particular time, or to be working with them to actually ask the question about whether someone is a veteran mm -hmm. um, when they are actually into that hospital system. Because lots of hospitals don't. Lots do, but there's room for improvement. So that we can support them with information that they can provide to their customers who can then contact us for support that they need. Um, we're looking forward to our celebrations in um, 2025, um, by which time the Network Delivery Project, which is the new project for which East Midlands is a trial, will have completed and be implemented across the, across the organisation. We're quite excited because actually, as a trial region, it provides us with opportunities that perhaps we might not have had before and might not have followed up before, because we can do whatever we think is appropriate, which is quite exciting, um, you know, like, like the social prescribing project, project. We've got to be sustainable as an organisation, which is where the fundraising comes in. Um, and basically, yeah, just to be the trusted source of support for military families. Lovely stuff. So, probably easier question now to end with than <laughs> you've answered previously. Um, where can people find out more and contact SAFA? Right, so we've got a website which is www.safa.org.uk. Um, there's loads of information on there. Specifically for the East Midlands, they can contact our single point of contact, which is 0204 566 um, There is a dedicated email which is eastmidlands.region at safa.org.uk as well. So there are various different ways of contacting us and indeed we have a web form so if you go to the website you can click through and contact us that way. Um, and we're open 9.30 to 5, five days a week and there's an answer phone if you're not there, if we're not there in the hub to take a call. Um, so those are our contact details. Excellent. Um, Obviously, we'll try and get a graphic up of those uh, yep. and make reference to that in the article. So if anyone out there is needing uh, SAFA's support or is intrigued about how they can get involved with fundraising, Sarah will be massively grateful, of course. Um, thank you for affording us your time today. It's been brilliant, very educational, really interesting. I hope some people, whoever finds this on the Great Grantham News or YouTube, uh, whenever it may be, uh, can make use of some of the information that you've shared with us today. So thank you very much for joining us and until next time, we'll see you soon.